All right. This time, let's call to order the uh, Water Sewer Commission's uh, meeting Wednesday, July, June 29th. Excuse me. Uh, ask you all to please rise. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. First thing I have to put. Yep. <laughs> first order of business. All right. All right. Um, you want to do minutes? Yes, please. Okay. I would like to move to approve the May 23rd, 2022 meeting minutes of the Board of Water Sewer Commissioners. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. I would now like to move that we approve the June 14th, 2022 meeting minutes of the Town and Northern Board of Water Supervisors. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, Mr. Foley. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best to uh, go through this. I got a couple pages of uh, That's not information. Better than three pages. A couple few. <laughs> right, I'm going to start off with uh, flushing and flow tests. Uh, work with the fire suppression companies has uh, thankfully slowed down as we end the near uh, the end of the quarter here. Um, I believe it was at the last meeting I had mentioned that we had one of our larger tests uh, that was scheduled for June, uh, I believe it was Thursday, the 16th, uh, Autopods International. Um, that, that test actually went off uh, and worked as it should, and unfortunately because it worked as good as it did, it did create some impacts to the area. Uh, adjacent to the flushing and where, actually where is that located? Mansfield F. Okay. Uh, three where the three million gallon tank is, yep. Roach yep. Brothers, McDonald's area. Yep. Um, and we actually had a call that came in from as far away as the lower end of Freeman Street. Oh well. Wow. Um, so that pump at full operation uh, was three thousand gallons per minute of water. Wow. So it, it wow. chucks some serious water. Um, it's close to, if not double, what we can typically achieve when we're actually out doing our flushing program unless we're using our booster pumps. And at that point, we can exceed 4,000, but it's not common. Um, but uh, that explains the reason for the disturbances. We exceeded the maximum flow rate that we could get in that area when we were doing our program. So like I mentioned to you guys before, we use these tests um, as a benefit. Anytime we can shake something loose at that type of a flow rate, we go out afterwards, respond to any areas that we notice the disturbance or any dead ends that we can pull it through and remove anything that was shaken loose that we couldn't normally remove. Um, so we've noticed um, these are reoccurring tests at most of these facilities. And uh, each time we've been in the area, it takes less and less water to clean up the same area. So it's, it's definitely improving. Um, you know, we're at the mercy of their responsibilities for doing these tests, but we're going to use them to our advantage whenever we can. Uh, they are required. I did get one more phone call and the person was upset that we allowed them to do it. Um, it's a requirement by the Norton Fire Department that these tests are yeah. done to make sure the facility devices work. And it's a requirement by the building insurance companies so that they are aware <coughs> of any problems with the system before there's a problem. Um, so this one person, after I explained to them, they still weren't very happy about it, but I think they understood a little bit more about why and where and how many there were. They were unaware that most commercial buildings have some type of sprinkler device yeah. and that the larger ones actually have a, you know, this is a diesel powered pump that runs that. So it, it can seriously move some water and create some issues if, uh, if it's done wrong. And we've seen that in the past uh, at a different location where the uh, pump was actually rebuilt by one manufacturer and wasn't tested and we went to do a test and it was actually installed backwards. So it started, we weren't able to finish, and that actually created some, some dirty water that took a while to chase. But uh, you know, thankfully, this one went fine. We shouldn't see them again probably for another six months, but uh, hopefully the impacts will be less and less each time. Um, that was done uh, the day after Mass DEP declared the level two drought mm. for this area. Um, because it was already scheduled, and they, for these tests, we require a post in the newspaper, post on our website. You know, we allowed it to continue because it also becomes a problem if we start stacking up these tests and sure. not allowing them to happen when they all want to be done at once. You know, we it could have eventually. We so. could be out of a drought situation, but by doing four or five of these tests in a row, you can create more problems and impacts to the system. Is there any way we could do this? Um, uh, in the in the cooler months, not so much in the cold months, but the cooler months with a 
uh, know the. I know exactly where you're going. There's yeah. so many of them that have to be done, and they have to be done within a certain window in mm -hmm. order to be valid okay. for their insurances. Yeah. Yes. Um, we do our best to try and keep it out of our peak demand months, uh, but there are at least three that always fall into it. This is one of them. I know we've done some while we are flushing, which was always a great mm -hmm. thing. I know we've coordinated yeah. that, which is great idea. Yeah. It would be nice to, I don't know, we could switch in the middle of the game. I don't think you can really. Yeah, it would have to be something that the fire department would, would approve that their insurance companies would allow if they could extend their window, you know. It's just the one time. Right. So we can do it that's yeah. more appropriate for us. Just our to get a little further away. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that level two drought is something that's actually a little bit different from what we typically would see. So Mass DEP changed the drought declaration process and they removed the drought advisory, which would be uh, where you'd get a warning, you know, you'd, you'd start noticing you know, lack of rainfall, stuff like that, which it was pretty common. You'd always get an advisory. Now that they've removed that um, from the entire level and they start off with the level one, at a level one drought condition, you're already supposed to implement water restrictions whether it be you know, a nine to five restriction, or right. even some, some type of situation like that. Um, we're covered because we have the restriction in place we based on our water yeah. um, withdrawal permit. So we don't allow automatic type sprinklers. So that covers us the basics under the, the level one. And it slowly gets into the level two where it's obviously water conservation and stuff. Um, some of, yeah, but, no. I just 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 as a curious, curiosity question. I don't know if I've asked this before, but um, people that have that are on wells, because you do see the sprinklers going, do, are they supposed to put a sign up or something or be it inspected is, by the board of health? Or it is supposed some? to be registered with the board of health, and they are supposed to get an approved sign from the board of health to go on the front lawn or in the most obvious spot. Okay. So we will. I was going to mention this shortly. Um, probably in the next week or week or two, if this remains the way it is now, or if unfortunately the drought gets worse, we will be out doing patrols for unauthorized water use. Right. You know, it's not uncommon that we go out when we know people are going to be using the water, which is between two and four a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we're banging on your door, asking you to shut your system off, or do you have a permit? You know, it's because we didn't see the sign. You know, so we try and avoid that whenever possible. Um, if there's a re repeat offender or if there's a, a problem where it doesn't appear in anybody's home, you know, if they're on vacation, it's an automatic system, you know, we will shut the curb stop off and see if the irrigation system dies. And now yeah. we know that it is physically connected and it's not supposed to be. We'll take a note of it and, and go from there. Sometimes we can actually shut the vacuum breaker off on the side of the house, which we have had to do in an emergency situation. Um, but we had uh, multiple breaks. This is probably 15 years ago. Um, we had police and fire all helping us go around and shut off because we couldn't gain yeah. on our tanks. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was uh, the night of the main breaks, unfortunately. Hopefully that doesn't, doesn't ever repeat. Um, but we have a list of you know, who has a well based on the, the town registration process. And, uh, you know, the last thing we want to do is go bang on somebody's door or pull them in the yard. Oh, yeah, no, I know. You know, you know, you know wanna... Unnecessarily. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously bother these people if they're doing everything the right way. But, um, yeah, the, the changes in the, the conditions are, are pretty significant. Um, yeah, they went, uh, like I said, they, they removed the drought advisory. So now it has uh, conditions are level zero, which is normal, level one mild drought, two significant, three critical, and four emergency. And with each different tier, they expect you to implement additional restrictions on top of what's already in place. <clears throat> we have something, is that us or is that from the state? That is Mass DEP. Right. Um, we have things in place. We have the yep. automatic restriction that's in place. We have the increased monitoring um, with the patrols. We can write fines to people who offend. Um, Section 2.13 under the rules and regulations. Um, we don't have to give a warning. We can give an initial ticket for the first offense. It's $150. Uh, second offense is 300, third offense is 300 in termination of the water service. Uh, so pretty significant. We had changed those quite a few years back. Um, you know, if we get somewhere and we understand that... Have we ever issued any of those? Yes, we have. I've unfortunately handed out quite a few of them. Uh, most of the time, people, after the first time, they get they, it. They get it. Um, 
you know, I think there's only been one or two that we've actually given a second ticket to, and it was a larger corporation that did not really care. They had the money, they, they were going to put that water down no matter what happened. So thankfully at that point, it was the end of the season, we pulled out of the drought and didn't have to deal with that again. But uh, DEP's really pushing municipalities or anybody with a water, water withdrawal permit to make sure that, you know, you're out there enforcing this. Um, you know, we got a decent amount of rain here the other day, but other communities upstream from us didn't get anything. So. It's, uh, it's all about the, the whole consensus of the Northeast and Southeast, not just each individual town. Um, you know, some of the things that uh, come through when DEP changes an advisory or a condition, uh, it usually comes with a list of recommendations, and they didn't fail to, to give that here. Um, some of the things that they recommend are implementing an additional drug surcharge for water use, or increasing and having seasonal rates not, not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. Um, the other thing that they would like to see is to force people to conserve water, is to prohibit or, prohibit or limit um, installation of new sod, seed, or landscaping. Um, Yikes. Yep. Yeah, uh, prohibit washing of hard surfaces, pressure washing, closing driveways, decks. Um, Yikes. Prohibit washing of vehicles, boats, and trailers, and um, put a halt on operations of non-circulating fountains. Wow. If you're going to do that, what is a non-circulating fountain? If you had a water fountain in the middle of a, somewhere and it's got a direct feed to keep it full. So some of the, yeah. the older fountains, like I think the one in the center of Taunton, just for example, has an oil fill on it. So it's got a float in the bottom basin. So if it's windy and most of the water goes on the grass, oh, okay. it keeps it at a safe level. Yeah. If that's not fed from a well and it's felt fed from a municipal source, they want it discontinued. Yep. Um, it, it's great information and it's it's all pertinent depending on how si significant of a drought we get into. <coughs> but what they miss out on is the impacts it's going to have to the residents, impacts to the businesses that are coming into the town, yep. and the overtime budget for the departments that are going to have to be out there enforcing it because it's not during normal working hours that you can catch these things going on. Yep. So. And hopefully, we never get to the situation where uh, we're in a critical or an emergency situation, but uh, they definitely have recommendations in place if we do. Um, have we, uh, when do we normally have our maximum uh, water day? Typically, it, it varies. It's usually a week. Um, it's usually middle August, but it really varies depending on what's going on in town. Um, I think last year it was like the middle of June. It was early last year yeah. because we had such a, a warm summer and it lasted so long. So it, it has changed with the climate change per se. Um, and the window that we used to see early on that was a week or two weeks is now going on to, to sometimes three or four weeks. We had fairly good rain last year too for the summer. Yeah, July 4th it rained for four straight yeah, days. Straight yeah, straight days. Yeah. We, we got... <laughs> The good life you know, yeah. in that respect. It, it was yeah, it was like every other weekend we had. No, we didn't have a drop last year because yeah. it rained so much. So. Right. So uh, this year, starting off as early as we are, it could be very different. So uh, when I was Water Commissioner Randolph, it was always the third week of June, right after school got out. Hmm. That would make sense. sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, on average, we do about 1.5 million gallons per day. And uh, on peak, we've been up to 1.9, 1.95. It, it really ranges depending on what's going on. Uh, yes. Sometimes if it's non-drought situation during the summer months, we have trucks that are putting water down at uh, locations that are building for compaction. Uh, you know, uh, we have a water truck right now that, that was recycling water for the school work uh, behind the schools to try and keep that so oh, yeah. that you can actually see the place and have compaction on the field. Where they in the water from? From us, it's metered and backflowed, but uh, you know all of that. As this, if this increases, is sure. going to come to an end, yep. and you know now they're going to have to find a new source. We got plenty of pressure washer people in town that uh, may be affected by that too. Right. If that's the case. Hopefully, we won't get there. No, exactly. It's just uh, just one of those things that uh, they have recommendations in place in case something does go there, but hopefully we don't. Yeah. Um, so we we'll jumped around a little bit. We're going to get some time. All right. Um, so, at the end of uh, this month is the end of the quarter, 
So John and I, um, thankfully now that he's back from his wonderful vacation, I didn't take me on. Um, <laughs> have been working on these reports that we uh, have a ton of them on, on due the end of the month and a few coming up right after that. Um, one of which I think I mentioned to you previously is the, uh, the disinfection byproduct reporting, the stage yeah. two. Um, so we did have a long running annual average exceedance at the same location that we did in November of 2021, which is the end of Richardson Avenue all the way, you couldn't be any further from the water treatment facility. Yep. It's a dead end. It's, yeah. a, it's a dead end main, um, very difficult to flush, limited houses down there for usage. Um, after doing the average from the samples that we come in, this uh, that site exceeded the MCL by one part per billion, which triggers an automatic public notice, um, public education per se is what they consider the notice to be. Yeah. Um, it's not an emergency. You know, this is for samples that were taken in the previous quarter. Um, so that will be distributed um, directly to the residents for a mass EP. That's a, a $4,000 mailing that we have to do. Um, so that's an individual mm -hmm. to every resident. Mm -hmm. um, that is posted on the, the website, it's posted here, it's posted at Town Hall, and it will be in some chronicle. Again, it's it's not an emergency. There's nothing for the public to do. It's, it's in the Sun Chronicle this morning. Yes, it should be. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you saw it, Steve? Yeah. You did? Okay. They, they, never got back, they never got back to me. <laughs> you want me to send you a copy? That'd be great, sure. actually, yes. Um, so it's uh, it's a very similar notice to the Manganese Post that go out yeah. every quarter for a well one. Um, regardless of how much or how little we use that location, if the sample result is close to their action level or their MCL in this case, it triggers a public notice. They consider it public education, but it does create more panic than anything because most people, including myself, will get a paper and will read through the first portion of it and won't read the whole, the whole document, you know, and automatically come to a conclusion that you know something's horrible here. Right. But uh, reading through the document, it explains and actually it does have a link on there where people can educate themselves further. Um, for impacts that each individual may see based on the sample results. They may want to talk to the doctor, they may not, um, but it all is pertaining to a lifetime of exposure. It's not if you drink one glass or ten glasses of water, you know, so that's where a lot of the disconnect happens of, you know, how important it really is. Yep. We want to make sure that people are aware of what's in the drinking water, and it's a requirement for mass um, that forces us to do that. But uh, I think the notices could be handled a little bit differently. And, uh, there is a, a form coming up that I was informed of, uh, I believe it might be the end of August, uh, to discuss some of the public notices that are required and possibly looking at changes in the wording and languages on them. Um, so it's not such a scary topic, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure, especially with everything else that's coming down the pipe. There's many, many changes <coughs> coming up with water quality um, samples. Uh, the results are going to be lowered to unachievable limits, and every single community is going to have these papers going out left and right. It's going to be posted on the website, you know. So you don't want to have so much information out there that it deters from the point of the paper. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we can be involved in that and see if they can change some of the wording to. Uh, well, I know they um, when they first came out with the template when they changed the groundwater rule, mm -hmm. um, that was pretty frightening mm -hmm. if you weren't full lock. Yeah. And uh, uh, they, they were pretty perceptive, uh, uh, DEP was, at least to that, because it was, it was absolutely scary right. for anyone reading it. Yeah. Especially women uh, with, uh, with babies yes. and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, feeding and stuff like that, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's up to each individual to determine, you know, how they think it's going to affect them or affect their family. And if they have questions, obviously reach out either to us. We can supply you with some basic information, but we're not medical professionals. Yep. You know, you really want to contact your doctor. If you think there's something going on, bring them a copy of the notice. They can call here. We can explain the situation to them. So maybe we, looking forward, um, maybe produce some sort of informational document um, or something, especially with the PFAS uh, uh, looming, something that's easy to read, user-friendly, I mean, the consumer confidence report is great, but I, I, I don't think that pulls people into, right. you know, people don't wait for that. Right. Uh, something like this, something easy to read, but, you know, maybe something we'll discuss more yeah, in the yeah. future, just, to, yeah. just uh, to get the word out to the people that yeah. they don't have to shut their water off and not drink it. Yeah, I brought something similar up 
um, with a conversation I had with one of the uh, members of Mass EP. Um, thankfully, knock on wood, we have not exceeded the 20 parts per trillion for PFAS like so many communities around us have. Um, it was recommended to put some type of educational document out. Anything that goes out has to be approved by them, yep. especially if there's wording changes to a template that they provide. Are you over 10? Yes. So uh, we are... I think when, they, when you go over 10, I thought that's when you have to do uh, an information of a send out. If ours averages out lower because <coughs> we do a quarterly sample at so, L3, yeah, yeah, no, right, um, yeah. so it, it hasn't got to that point yet. Um, with the looming changes that are happening, with um, UCMR5 that's coming out, they're going to add, I believe it's 29 contaminants from the PFOS family and lithium as the 30th sample. What are you doing to us? <laughs> and the limits of four out of the PFOS six that we have now are going to drop. Um, there's going to be an action level. I think it's going to be temporary until they make the MCL. Yeah. But it's going to go from the 20 parts per trillion that we test for now, and a few of them are going to go down to four parts per quadrillion. So, so unobtainable numbers. So the the, the PFAS, um, the magic six that we do now, um, they're only talking about PFO and PFAS, yes. correct? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, there's two, there's two or four <laughs> contaminants that they're pulling I think from it, that family. I think those are the two. Yeah, I, I think those are the two uh, that are usually the highest, anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Right. So again, it is an unachievable change. Yeah. yeah. Um, whether it's an action level that you exceed, whether it's an MCL that you exceed, you're still going to be required to do a public post. Yeah. It's going to scare people. Um, it's unfortunate that we, as the end supplier, are being penalized to try and remove this when it's still a product that's being used to, to yeah. date by many manufacturers. That's Not right. to mention what gets imported from overseas. That's correct. You, know, you need to stop bringing it in and allowing it and then allow yep. the, the communities to clean it up. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a revolving circle. Totally agree. Yep. And, you know, you're going to deal with the same thing and same impacts. It's going to be in concentration when it's in wastewater, and it has yep. to be removed you know, from the wastewater treatment facilities. Yep. So it's, it's going to be a, an interesting you know, five, seven, ten years coming up as these regulations change. And you know, you may have a perfectly clear glass of water, but it's got ten samples that are saying you know, it's, it, it's got something wrong with it. Yeah. And unfortunately, bottled water from independent tests, fifty-three out of hundred bottled water tests that were done, you know, all showed levels that were way above the actual yep. levels. Yeah, they don't, they don't so, yeah. get regulated like we do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, back to the THM the other couple minutes. We had been in touch with our engineers, Weston and Sampson, because when we put the water treatment facility online, and for the simplest terms, the water was cleaner by removing the iron and manganese, but we saw <coughs> changes in the sample results that indicated differently. So on the TDHMs and the HAA5s, we noticed increases on all of our samples. As the water got cleaner, they started going up which makes sense because you have more free chlorine available in the system. It's not being used by the iron and manganese, so it's lasting longer and staying active in further distances away. So the longer it stays in concentration with the water. What are you getting for a residual there on which is that? Uh, there was a, I think we had a, I'm pretty sure, like a 1.8, 1.8. Wow, yeah. that's pretty good. It is good for, for being that far yeah. away, yeah. And in the system? It, it's good for the system for, Making sure the water is clean, yeah. it's bad for TH Yeah. because obviously the water is, is, it is yeah. it's a difficult yeah. thing to do. Um, so we had already been in the process of taking additional water quality samples because we were trending in a way that we didn't like. Um, we've spoken with Mass DEP about that, and um, are, they're requiring us to have our engineer do a report based on all the sample results. And we're going to ask them again, this is, we've already asked them once and they denied us, um, to look at allowing us to lower the pH that we're running at, which would in turn allow us to lower the chlorine that we run at our full lot facilities. So the higher the pH, which was changed many years ago and went back to a very, very old water quality analysis, um, and the chlorine that we run at now were implemented before the water treatment plant went online. Yeah. So you can't run at the same chemical addition levels as you were prior to filtration, you have to make a change at some point. And unfortunately, we're probably a year behind on that because the water quality report was not required when the water treatment plant went online. It was noticed after the fact and then implemented. So we're six months to a year behind 
where we can't make any changes without DEP approval. So it's a very good chance that because we're hovering right around that action level of the MCL that we're going to see additional exceedances at that particular location, which is an half. That's the only one we've got, right? Yeah. The other ones have been elevated, but nothing has come to a point where we're exceeding the MCL. Well, we're uh, yeah. but keep, keep them call up, but it's the most important thing. Right. So that's the, yeah. that's what needs Agreed. to be done. It needs to be done. So. So, um, so one of the reports that we were working on based on the original exceedance back in November 2021 was a 180-day review of the system. Um, that is also required to be done by the engineers. Uh, that was done and mailed off uh, last week to MassDEP. We referenced some of the water quality samples that we've been taking up to this point when that letter was handed out. Uh, we referenced changes in water quality that happened, I believe it was back in 2017 or 18 when the pH level was forced to change and um, we are awaiting um, a conference with MassDEP to review those results and uh, hopefully start a discussion to see what we can change. Um, everything we do, we want to do in small increments and take baby steps. So this could be a very long process by the time we come out of this reporting level. <coughs> but again, as John had mentioned, you know, we're more worried about bacteria in the system than we are too much chlorine. So it's a delicate balance. And, you know, it's, it's a brand new system, the way it's being operated now with cleaner water, you know, and, you know, it's, it's a learning curve for that. Yep. Um, part of that is actually looking at how much water we have in storage. So back when the town was designed originally, the, it was designed for um, water holding capacity for fires. So we have a ton of water on storage. We have a three million gallon tank down on Mansfield Ave. We have um, half a million gallons up in the air at Cottage Street, we have a million on the ground at Cottage Street, and we have another 367,000 at that center. So, not including the storage that we have in the pipes alone, you know, you're over five million gallons of water when everything's dropped for. Great. Um, great for fire protection, difficult for operational procedures with rolling tanks, using storage, because tanks can also create THMs. So, um, Cottage Street being built in 1957 is part of the 20 year master plan. So we do have um, phase one to look at the land around it and see if we can put up possibly a smaller tank with better mixing capabilities. Um, definitely not a steel tank because obviously you have heat transfer that happens with the steel, um, which also creates water quality issues. So yep. all stuff that's uh, coming down the road, you know, capital expenses and stuff like that will be something to deal with in the future. <coughs> and uh, we'll touch on one other thing. I've got a couple minutes here before we have uh, the 6 o'clock. Um, this is really under other items. Um, as requested, we did send out a letter uh, to the residents along Route 123 um, where the Mass DOT improvement project is going on. Yep. Uh, we've spoken to most of these people um, when they've seen us out there, but we, we actually hand delivered notices to these homes. Um, Cautioning them, you know, if they're doing laundry, you know, check the water first, especially if they're in the area uh, where the construction is ongoing or if they've been recently tied over to the new remain because differences in pressure and flow um, could shake something loose from their portion of the water service. Um, most of the residents had dealt with clogged aerators, which um, we had mentioned about removing that and doing the flush after it had been connected. Um, some people were unaware of what that was or how to remove it, so we've actually been to quite a few of the homes and explained how to do it, what the best possible options were for flushing the home. Um, and we also, uh, in that notice, I don't remember exactly how it was worded, but we, we're trying to educate them that there's a possibility that their water service could be as old as the pipes in the ground that we we're replacing, you know, 70 to 90 years old. Um, some of those homes in that stretch from North Washington to 495 you know, are close to 100 years old, and they're still running the Black Iron water service that was, you know, um, the top of the line back in the day, sure. but you know now you barely have any pressure and you have issues with water quality, which aren't reflected by the water that's in the, the distribution system. Um, so we've done I don't know, at least 10, 10, 12 major inspections. Um, we've gone out, you know, got into the home with the resident, explained to them what we see coming in, also talked to the contractor for what they tied into because it may not be the same if there was a repair done at some yep. point. Um, you know, just to help the customers understand what's going on and what possible impacts they could have in the future. You know, if they're starting to see issues with pressure or discoloration or something and they have an iron pipe service, it's something that they need to plan um, you know, 
to remedy in the future. You know, it may be short term, it may be long term. It really each service we've seen some that were in great condition, and we've seen some that were absolutely horrible, and the contract had difficulty tying into. Right. It's just the nature of the soil <coughs> that we have and, that and the water table that's down there. So um, that letter was taken taken very well. We've had you know no complaints about it, um, other than the fact of you know obviously how they're going to pay for it. It's just something that's out of sight, out of mind. You know that uh, until something goes wrong, you don't think about it. Right. But uh, as a homeowner with an older home, it, most people aren't unfamiliar with issues living in an older home. Yep. This one's just out of sight, so it's. Yeah. Well, the fact that they're being dug up and mm -hmm. inspected probably helps people realize <coughs> that it's not just something being thrown up against the wall either. So. Sure. Do we have a policy that if you were to uh, build a or remodel your house or do any modifications that you replace the water surface? We do not. It was something so the city of Boston that was discussed. Is, city of Boston, that's, a, that's, a, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. It's a requirement, yeah. It's a requirement. yeah. yeah. They yeah. have a lot of old leg goose necks, so this is their attempt to uh, eliminate, eliminate them all. Yeah, we're, I'm not sure how Boston works, but here, we own the water main to the curb stop. Yes, the resident you. owns the curb stop to the house, and we own the meter inside the house. Everything else, internal plumbing is owned. So as a project goes along, like this one here, where we're actually replacing the older water main, if it has a, uh, an iron pipe service, it more than likely has a, a lead gooseneck. Some of them we've seen were direct taps. It's not as common as the lead gooseneck. But by doing this portion of 123 under the Mass DOT improvement, we remove our portion um, which, in theory, would be the worst portion with the, the lead gooseneck, um, and that gives residents a chance to uh, to buy some time with their portion, which would just be iron pipe. Or, in some cases, we haven't seen it, but I've heard it, it has been seen before as galvy pipe. Uh, so, definitely not something you want to run your water through. But again, it was okay. No, and it's on both sides. It comes on both sides. It's uh, still hard to North attempt. Washington Street in Boston. Uh, we saw wood water pipe. Yeah. Well, I've, seen, I've seen pictures. I've never seen one in person. Yep, I've seen, I've seen the repairs. So Ripley, believe it or not. <laughs> and it works because it's under the ground, by the way. So it's yep. sitting in the yep. ground, by the way. So it's yep. not yep. yeah, actually well, yeah. yep. um, So that brings us up a little bit past 6 o'clock. Um, we actually have the gentleman from 196 Mansfield Ave here. Um, he was. Elias, you still out there? No, I think he went to the bathroom. Sorry, he better run to the bathroom or something. Yeah, and uh, Mansfield, we have, we don't let people do repairs. If you have a leak on your lawn, we make them renew the whole service because it's going to leak again. It's, it's going to fail, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. So. Elias, we're Elias, all set if you are. Yep. Okay. Great, thanks. Sure. Sorry for holding you up. Oh, no. six. Uh, yeah, I'm long winded. Okay. Well, uh, um, well, that's that's better than mm -hmm. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, uh, no problem. See First, I want to thank the board and, and um, uh, Frank for you know, the last six months working with me on uh, designing and, and permitting uh, <coughs> this property. And then again, uh, uh, working with uh, Mr. Uh, John Cumming to transfer a portion of those sewer rights over to a property that he bought. So, you know, um, I appreciate that. And uh, your patience with us as well as trying to understand this process. Um, I am, uh, I, I have a um, agreement to uh, sell the property to a larger developer who's gonna, who's gonna go ahead and build the project that's been approved by the town. Um, so, uh, I'm here before you tonight, I, I'm not sure, um, I guess there's a, uh, an approval that's needed just to, as, as far as transferring the property, um, you know, the, the 5,000 gallons per day of sewer rights that remain with the site, run with the land, I understand you have a right of first refusal that uh, uh, you, 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 you need to either waive or, or exercise. So I wanted to try to get that accomplished um, this evening uh, because the, uh, the due diligence period will expire uh, sometime next week and then there'll be a closing very shortly thereafter, so within the next couple of weeks. So I was hoping we could get uh, your approval just to 
check that box, yep. so I'm ready to go. Um, I don't have any hang-ups with this with this closing. It's basically, a formality, right? Yeah. No, no, not at all. I'm glad uh, glad things are moving forward. I mean, I know yeah. this has been a while for you, and it's been a while. Frustrating it's been a because long road. it was uh, kind of unknown for you. I'm yeah. sure. And well, I got a great. I learned a lot. Yeah, it's good to say. Right. <laughs> and, and, and well, us too. You know, yeah, us too, because it doesn't happen all that often. Yeah, and I appreciate working with with, with us on it, and uh, you guys have been great. So, and this is going to be a great project. Um, this is a great group uh, there. So. So the building that's going to be built is going to be under your spec that we had spoken about prior. It's, it's exactly going to be, what's so they're going to proof. use your plan. Basically. Use all the, the civil plans are are, are 100 percent. So the numbers are staying the same. Everything staying perfect. the same. Okay. No no changes, uh, unless they decide to change things. But right now they're uh, yep they're planning on building that building. All right. As approved by, by you folks as yep. well. So. Yep. I believe you gentlemen made a so, vote on the original. Um, waiver for 196, so I think the same thing. So we need to here. vote to, to waive our first order of refusal again for the same card. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to move that we would, the town waives our first right of refusal for the sewer flow, our sewer capacity of 5,000 gallons per day mm -hmm. for 196 Mansfield Ave. Waives it or exercises it? Uh, well, you're going to ask. You're exercising the first right of refusal, correct? You're not, yeah, you're not taking the capacity. Right. We have, we have no need for the capacity. Okay. Right. I just so want to make sure that we're on the so same page. And it's so we are waving, waving it or waving it? Waving it. Waving it. Waving the right. That's waving the right. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Waving the right, right for first. My apologies. I second right. the motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you very well, much. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Good luck with everything. Be in touch for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Good luck. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Have a good summer, okay? Yes, thanks. Enjoy your three or Sorry about that. I just, it sounded, no, it sounded it's kind a, of funny. It's like a double negative. It, it does yeah. sound yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure you got it right. Yeah. What did we just do? Uh, if I may, do sure. one, one more thing. Of course. Um, discussion about changes to what we have. It's it's under Section 8 of the Rules and Regulations of the Mountain Water Department for approved materials. Okay. Um, everybody's aware of the problems with acquiring duct line pipe yeah. and fittings and everything. Um, we have some building that's going on in town who could see an eight or nine month delay <coughs> on Dr. Lion Pipe. Yeah. Um, they are requesting the board to review the possibility of adding um, Blue Group C900, the high pressure plastic PVC water main, um, to our materials list. Um, I will say in the past we did have an issue with some Blue Group that was used in town. I believe. From what I understand, it was stored incorrectly. Um, the PVC pipe does not do very well in direct, direct sunlight, direct sunlight yeah. and UV rays. Um, what had happened or what was explained that could have been the cause is that it was a combination of the sunlight and possibly deflection on the installation of the pipe. When they went to do a saddle tap, it actually had a linear crack that went down the length of the pipe. They were able to cut it out, do a repair. Um, just one additional thing to think of, um, obviously we would inspect all the materials just as we do ductile or anything else that's used, um, but I think the Blue Brute or similar is a faster option for contractors right now looking to do building. Um, so I had some documents here I can pass along if you guys want to look at it. It has some pretty good pressure ratings and stuff. I, don't, I didn't compare it to ductile. Uh, because we, were, we already I, have that in we spec. We use that in this field, so yeah. Yeah, I use it all the time. Quite a few yeah. towns use it. I don't know if you run across that same issue with the air cracks. Uh, and the, stuff. Only, the only thing with the C909 is that um, uh, tracing capabilities. Yep. You need to ground it oh, up. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would definitely we need, need a metal tape. Yeah, metal, metal tape. You know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the tape because it's very fragile and it'll pull apart on, mm -hmm. on backfill. Uh, a 14 gauge tracing wire, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we use. Probably that's just thing you could detect where it is on the ground. Correct. Yeah. 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 We use that on the plastic water services that we now yeah. allow also. Yeah. Um, physically connected to, to good connections. Correct. Um, yep. You know, something like this would be very similar to AC pipe where you'd have silo taps. Um, we would want to have stainless steel. Yep, a banded, bolts, a banded bolts and nuts with the band clamp. 
Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we have dug up a few band clamps with the bolts that actually rotted off and created a leak. And there's nothing wrong with the rest of it. Yep. It was just a nut that rotted away. Yep, I've seen it too, yeah. Um, so yeah, crazy. with this here, <coughs> I don't know enough about it. I'm sure if Mr. Bernstein may, um, if this has the same load carrying capacity for main roadways, like a mass DOT road, like 140 or 123, or if the board would want to require a ductile to get it out of that main roadway and then transfer it to the Blue Brute or, or something similar on what would more or less be the private portion of the property. You um, just have to follow the manufacturer's um, recommendation on depth of cover. Okay. Yep. Just going to make sure you take care of it. Sand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the sand bedding, bedding underneath the bedding is important to follow yeah. the bedding because it's a flexible pipe versus a rigid pipe. Right. Sounds like storage but it's, is but important it's tough, it's tough stuff. You can, it's I've used uh, this in lieu of uh, ductile iron in places where we had um, um, stray electric current. Yep. And we replaced it with uh, C900 in, yep. or uh, in City of Quincy. So we would need a, a stray electric to current with the subway. The regulations to add this new material because okay. it's something that's not in there. Um, can we add? Uh, okay, well, let's, well let's, let's do the vote first. Um, do, do we need to put any stipulations on this? Well, I think I think there's, there's certain conditions that you need to uh, for this with the uh, the trace tape is uh, or the trace wire, whatever we decide, uh, and bedding. Like like Steve said, it's the bedding is uh, very important as well. Okay. All around the pipe bedding, it needs you know six inches of uh, sand all around it, or or whatever is determined. That's so do we need to put that in the motion? Um, I think it's, oh. it should be uh, maybe write it in the specs after we've accepted it, right? Yeah. 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 And everything, I mean, should theoretically be inspected by us anyway. Correct. So you know. Correct. Yep. So we can add this per inspection yep. when it's used? Yep. Because it passes back. Yeah, well, yeah, we so have to inspect so everything. Well, really still. making the motion just saying as a R equal. Yes. To use C900 in the of ductile line pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's adding it to the material spec. We have Or either, spec. actually, either yeah. either they can use. They, they, they have their choice. Yeah. So I, I have a question. Would this set any, like, precedent when people come to, like, get jobs for, like, like we just had the White Street Project on, like? Well, this is going forward from here on out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do I, we I, want I, that in our... Good call. You know, yeah, that is a good question. I, I would think... What do you think? I mean, Steve. I use it, as I said, due to the city of Quincy, it was fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we were careful. I mean, we're doing that Southwester Street job, and we're going to be doing the Southwester Street. <coughs> you do the pressure test on it and everything else, it, there has to be pressure test requirements. Yep. You know, this is all just for water. Yep. Yeah. So I would think it's probably not just faster, but less expensive. Than I the believe as well. so. The so. only question that I have is about grounding. So homes are typically grounded to the water connections in the houses, which obviously go back to the water main. By adding this pipe and taking away the earth ground, that's typically you have to drop a rod in water. Now. Okay, that, I, that's electrical. So You'd I, have to I drop a rod. That's that. a, my the house that I built here in Norton is the same way. I was 300 feet off the road, and it was all plastic. So I, you know, I, I had to drop just to drop a couple rods in. Just because yeah, of that, for that purpose. It's yeah. just a separation of the departments. You know, if we change something and another department is, is unaware of the changes, I don't want to see something get overlooked. Sure. Maybe said that's something we should also add mm -hmm. when, we, when we vote, you know, get this. Yeah, we, just we can vote to this amend the little things like that. and add that in, and then we can do a list of requirements yep. based on Perfect. department. All right, so we exactly. can just, just vote to add this Correct. for now. Yep. Okay, I'd like, to, I'd like to uh, move that we add the Blue Brute C900 piping to acceptable usable Material uh, experts. materials. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think it's a good product. Yeah. Like I said, if you take care of it, it's going to be every bit as good as ductile, and it's going to probably last longer. Thank you for that. Sorry. The, C, the C factor alone. Oh, it's it was, huge. Yeah. 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 Thanks, yes. Frank, do you want to mention about turtle crossing? You can mention. Okay. <laughs> that's not on my agenda. It is not on it. This is all the <laughs> I know, that's just kidding, Steve. No, that's why I was bringing it up. We'll talk about it later. If you want. 
Right, we can talk about that when we um, topics not really topics. Yeah. Uh, all right, Steve, you are up, my friend. Excellent. Uh, not a lot to report on the sewer. I have to start with the water. Tara had sent uh, an email out. Uh, so I think the biggest thing is uh, the White Street uh, water mains. Um, so President Sampson has done their review, made the recommendation to award, and sent that package along. With recommendation for award to Gravity Construction, at a price of approximately three hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. The originals are in the mail, um, but I think the action for tonight is um, if the commission's in agreement to award to Gravity to authorize Frank um, to, s to sign and send the notice of intent to award letter to Gravity to mm -hmm. get the process going. Sounds good to me. Uh, do I have to put the amount of this in the motion, or is this just him to sign that? I don't think um, he needs to put the amount in it. I think it's just, just to, to sign. Just sign. We, we already voted I, for yep. the amount. Yes, yeah, so you've already voted. Okay. Um, I'd like to move um, to allow, to authorize Superintendent Frank Fournier to um, sign the notice of intent, sign and issue the notice of intent to award to Gravity Construction for the Wedge Street Area Water Main Improvements Project. There is no notice to proceed, but the It is, uh, no, right now it's intent to award. Intent to award. Okay. It is intent to award because yeah. they, they still got to get the contracts and stuff, so okay. you'll have another, you'll have another vote. Okay, okay. there's two. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. And then on, uh, the only other thing probably worth mentioning on well four, and then this was in, Tara's email. I think she copied everybody on yeah. this. So I'm just reading from yeah, WRB to, to put it into the minutes. Yeah. So Mass EP. Uh, so they still don't have issue a file number um, for well number four, but or they hadn't as of the Here. postponed Here. the extended hearing fine. date, and now they do have the file number, so they're ready for the next hearing. Um, so that should move forward. Um, and I think the others are just for your information. The other stuff yeah. that she has okay. in there. So I think that's it on the water. Um, so on the sewer, speaking of CONCOM, so at the same time that you guys were on for Well 4, we were on for Holly Road Generator, um, and we got, um, as of this week, we had sent them some supplemental information after the hearing, so we're all set with Holly Road. Um, the RDA has been, has been issued, and now I actually have it. Um, so we're good to move. We have the permits. Um, we need to do the work out there at Holly Road to have okay. the generator. So yeah. we're gonna nice. we're still um, intending to, you know, hopefully get out there, get get stuff out in July, out to bid, uh, and be ready to go in the fall. Well, and then and then be ready to wait for a generator to be <laughs> to be delivered. <laughs> Side your hands. Side so, your hands. Yeah, yeah. So so that is that's where we're at with that. The biggest push since the last meeting, we've been working on alternatives for the uh, town municipal complex tying into the sewer. Mm -hmm. So we'll have. Uh, I have a draft, um, the engineer I had working on that has, has given me a draft, so I'm going to look at that this week, um, and we'll be wrapping that up over the next couple of weeks. Good. I know that they're anxious yeah. for that, um, just to figure out what their options are for, for connecting right. to the sewer. Excellent. So that was, that's was that been the biggest push, <clears throat> and as I mentioned last time, we are going to be working with the schools, specifically on the Yale School, um, so now the school's out. Um, we're going to schedule to get in there during July and uh, and look at their connections and make sure that there's uh, that they don't have any uh, unwanted connections into the sewer. You know, the, the stormwater is going where it's supposed to go. Yep. Um, I think those are the biggest things. Oh, we did. So Frank, you worked with John Potts from my office over the last couple of weeks here. That July 6 deadline for the S, the new regulation on SSO public notification process, where if you have one. It's just this process. So we're working on filling out the, the paperwork. Did that, I didn't get a chance to catch up with John today. It's either in or he's going to have it in in the next I submitted day. A, a revised copy to him. He was going to review it. I had a few questions on okay. there. There's four or five questions that can answer yes or no yeah. based on limitations that we have, uh, primarily because we don't control the website. Yeah. So there's the two-hour notification post that's required. It all depends on when it happens. There's the four-hour um, requirement to find an SSO, 
know, if, again, if it's the middle of the night and we're not actively out there looking for something, we don't know what's happened, yeah. you know, you could obviously exceed that four hours. I'm gonna, uh, pardon my ignorance, but SSO, what's, what does that stand for? Oh, it's sanitary sewer overflow. So basically just a, a, a you know, man all overflow. The sewer, oh, leaking sewer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. for whatever reason. Okay. And this is, again, this is just about getting the notifications okay. out, not to DEP, but to the public. So yeah. the public knows that you're dealing with, yeah. with it. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's okay to answer no to some of the things that they want to require, and that's what came out of some of those meetings, some of these, you know, the whole, you know, typical DEP, they're trying to nail it down, you know, two hours. You're right, how do you, how can you sign something that, that says, I guarantee we'll Report this out within two hours. Yeah. And if, they, if you explain what well, the limitation is, once you're aware is. of it, then it's one thing. When you, you know, exactly. Of it, how can yeah. You possibly yeah. Right. yeah, but uh, also, you know, if it's a, some catastrophic level of right. FSSO, I think notifying DEP is not going to be at the top of the priority exactly. list. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's just limitations on our end because we don't win not the operational person that gets things on the town website. I think it's the same with many other municipalities. You know, you're not that same person. Yeah. And either you're going to pay that person to be on call 24-7 so that they answer the phone so they can get this post out, or you're going to have to find another way of doing it. So we have the subscriber-based system with no and alerts. Um, that covers us for most items, but not for everything. Okay. Um, so it's it's a working process, and we've got a few days left to get yeah. it out. And then, then it'll, there'll be a, a lengthy review process and I'm sure some back and forth. That's good. That's a good. Um, it's good public uh, relations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's a good idea. Yep. So we'll re, um, we'll get that in to meet the, the time frames and, and see what DEP has to say, and we'll continue to support whatever we need to going forward on that. Um, the only other thing, and Tara alluded in, in her email, it's the with it being the end of the fiscal year, we've been going year to year with a with an annual contract just for our general services that. For both water and sewer reach up we have separate um, contracts with the town to just support the day-to-day -day stuff you know primarily attendance at these meetings and the things that come up um, so i had where i just emailed this to frank today a pdf of, for the on the wastewater side for our renewed annual contract for next year it's the same amount that it has been the last 10 years um, everything's basically the same you know, I work scope. I work some scope in here, Frank. More about the the complying with the DEP regs and some of this nifty stuff that you're going to have to deal with this year. Um, and if the nifty turns into a bigger project, we do a separate contract for that. But we can cover a lot of it under this contract. So Tara is going to probably have hers for the next meeting. I present this. I, I know you guys haven't seen it. It's we can either you can. You can vote on this tonight. You can wait till the next meeting if you want to look at it. It is the you know the format is what's been approved by legal counsel. We use the long form because they don't like our short form. Um, so I, it's still left to you guys. It's, so going into the next, so the next fiscal year starts next week, right? So right. we're um, starts we'll, uh, Friday tomorrow, right? It's right. just the regular general services contract. Just general services. Yeah. So as we incur stuff. You know, Tonight's meeting will be the last action on the last year's general services contract. And Tara held off on sending hers over because she didn't want to confuse the documents. Um, I believe it was at the last meeting or a prior meeting, we had an added cost for the additional water quality samples we were taking and the TTHM review and reporting that was required. Um, so that was tagged on to the general services under water. Um, which we are paying out under this fiscal year. So I was trying to, just to keep the paperwork separate, I think that's why Tara held off yep. on that. Yeah, she explained that to mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. <coughs> and How much is your con contract for? It's a $50,000 contract. Right and I think we're at like 42. Haven't increased it, don't you want pay rates? So some of the rates are increased. Okay. So, and it's based on a rate chart. So you're right, there are, um, like a five dollar increase in some of the uh, the rates. But I think no, your mileage goes up to sixty two cents, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Is that enough? I mean, I I'm just saying. Do unless you're on July first, it's going up, going up. Yes. Yeah, unless you're yeah, on an electric car, happen. then it goes down. <laughs> yeah, never goes down. And I think we're at like forty three thousand on last year's contract. Yeah, a couple more thousand through this month. So um, 
just a little. Bit. I only say that because I have the same type of contract. Yeah. And I always yeah. The, the yeah. Rate sheet, so. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, I'm sure the end number yeah, will have to increase, but the same as for now, right? Yeah. I mean, it works. Well, yeah. it's an hourly It's an hourly contract, yeah. so it's going to like doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, we would have to come for an amendment if, if you guys needed more services yeah. than what this entails. Yeah, we, but it's always worked. We'll take a look at that with your board and sign. Yeah, I've written these contracts. Yeah. Let's right? Yeah. 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 I was just asking if I had forgotten anything. You just mentioned lead and copper samples and stuff. Okay. Yeah, we just got bumped up to 60 again. Are you a principal or a team leader? I am team leader. Go team. Tara and I are team <laughs> leaders. So Barbara and Fran were the principals. They have not, I don't know if they build it all. Fran might have built a couple hours this past year. We got some advice from them. We did, yeah, yeah, the principals. A couple. Um, so I imagine that your certificate of um, insurances are updated yep. automatically and all that stuff. Oh, yep. Yeah, that. I'm just telling you what happens to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 the question. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good to have you looking at it. You kidding me? Oh, good. I only have two million dollars professional liability insurance. That's all you got. I really refuse you. I wouldn't sign it. Bad. Less than. Okay with me. Okay, uh, and this is a not to exceed fifty thousand, right? Correct. All right. I would like to move to approve the agreement for engineering services between the town of North <coughs> and Western and Sampson Engineers. Um, this is for uh, general engineering consulting services related to wastewater issues for fiscal year twenty twenty three, not to exceed in the amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Very good. So we can sign all these then. Yeah, this should yeah, be the last page. There's three there. Three. Yeah. Date that first page to it. Yeah, you can put today's date. Okay. Start with And I can. Uh, and the only other thing I have on here that I can segue for Steve into is I have Turtle Crossing here uh -huh. for discussion. Okay. So why don't we do that now? Sure. So Frank and I met with the Turtle Crossing design folks on June 23rd at a meeting we had here. Uh, it was an interesting meeting. I'm not so sure I learned anything, but other than the fact is 172 unit 40B. I think we all knew that. And as you remember, uh, for some reason their permit has expired, and based on that, they literally have to more or less start over again. And what we mean by that is uh, they have to delineate wetlands, they have to file notice of intents for conservation, uh, they have to prepare new documents based on, our, on the comments that Western Simpson provided, which I don't really think they understood most of them, to tell you the truth. The number, I don't think they really have gotten into the depth of the... Uh, but we did go over the fact. I, what we did learn was that in the submitted set of the drawings that were submitted previously, the non submitted set, they claim they had cross sections, which is hard to believe. Yes. You know, <laughs> profiles because you know the lines were so shallow. Had so, a foot, you know, less than a foot below grade. So um, they claim that everything was set to go and the project was shovel ready to build and I guess the good news is they didn't build it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean seriously, yeah. I don't see how they could have put in a sewer line a foot and a half below ground and have manholes. I mean, I don't even know how that works. Uh, but anyways, uh, they're probably going to keep the buildings and the built the mix of buildings that they're proposing. Uh, they're going to relay out the utilities. Uh, what Frank explained to them that the deal made on fees and linkage and stuff that they had in previously is null and void now and we'll have to renegotiate that for instance the generator that was they were going to pay for has already been built uh, we were looking for water main improvements all the way down to Newland Street at White uh, they took it under advisement they told us they would um, re stop preparing the plans and we would get a chance to review them again and approve them uh, so they're not in any hurry anymore? Pretty straightforward meeting uh, as I said I'm um, I don't know why they had to send five people to the meeting, but that's, you know, their prerogative. Um, 
So it's almost like they're just starting over from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what it looks like to us. They're starting over. Isn't that on another clock anymore? <coughs> no, they talk. I asked the question. I asked the question, the second time I asked the question <laughs> when they're planning on starting construction within the year. Okay. Hmm. Okay. okay. Well. The biggest thing with that is the infrastructure improvements have to be done in place operational first before construction can begin because right. the water's um, infrastructure that's down there can't support what they're looking to put in. So, I mean, if they want to do a, a combined start and have the water main and the building one at the same time, but we can't liven that up until the infrastructure is improved on the water side. Yeah, we side. told them it's two, two distinct projects. One is exterior and one is interior. That we want to see a separate set of documents for the municipal stuff. Because the drawings that we looked at before <coughs> was so confusing. It really was too confusing to try to figure out what was happening yeah. in and outside the properties. And then we talked about looping the water main, which to me is still a concern of mine, but since we don't have the final drawings at the moment, I was kind of premature to talk about. It's a very long road. It's a comprehensive permit. Again, it's a 40B. Normally, um, on 40Bs that I've been experi personally experienced with, two egresses are normally required for 40B. Matter of fact, it's normally required for you know a cul-de-sac, which is our roadway, which. X number of feet long according to the planning board regulations. But again, this is only Board of Appeals and it's a comprehensive permit. So it's kind of like something that they can ask for a variance, but normally for our public safety, it's usually not something forgiven. Because if one entrance is blocked and you have 170 units that you need to get a fire engine to, that's a problem. But there's only one egress. And the second thing is that it's a one very, very long water main. And you know, I asked Frank, do we normally require a looping of water mains? The answer is yes, we do. But th there was no looping of the water mains uh, on this project. Th what they did do was they looped it around the buildings. So internally, there's a big loop around their proposed buildings, but that's not what we mean. That's still just coming along one long straight of Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, as I said, when, you, when I asked the question about looping water mains, oh, yeah, we're going to loop it around the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's something that we can look at again. The problem is, of course, the parcel of land, which I should have brought that parcel. I should have brought. You have that figure that they gave up? I do not. All right, I should, probably should share that with everybody. Yeah. It's a graphic presentation right. of what they're proposing to do on one sheet. Kind of really neat. I'll send it to you. You can send it out to everybody. But it's just one. It's a. It's it's at 127 Newland Street. If you drive up the road in Newland Street, you say, okay, you'll find 127, but the opening for the property is 40 feet wide next to 127 Newland. You have to drive in, I don't know, several hundred feet in order to get to basically where they're building the land the line? in the rear. Is that that open space across so the K Streets? You can't see it from Newland Street. No. It's, it's all trees. No, it's what Red Mill Road there? Near right, it's uh, north of that. After Red Mill Road, after uh, three or four Hosted properties. Three or four properties beyond yeah. that. Yeah. It, it looks like a driveway. Right, it looks like a driveway. Right, I mean they, you okay. can't see anything from Newland. I mean I live on off of, I live on Newland, so I mean you know uh, I go up there all the time, but I'm not gonna trespass in the property. They, they claim that the land is all more or less cleared, way back in the area. But again, it's a long, narrow piece, but there's no way of looping the water main. There's nothing to loop it to. I mean, I guess they could loop it if they got the easement to loop it, but to me, that's the only thing I really, I mean, the, all the other comments you have is valid. I mean, I agree with that, but all that stuff is doable. Um, I don't know if we want this big one. I mean, and, you know, they, they're putting a hydrant at the end. There's a cul-de-sac at the end of the, of Turtle Crossing Road or whatever it's going to be. And there's a cul-de-sac necessary, I guess it was required by the fire department that they have a turnaround. So there's a lollipop at the end of the road. And what they did was they showed that the proposed water main was going to extend beyond the lollipop. Um, so it wasn't a dead end water main. They basically showed that, that it, it the future, somebody could be building back there, but I'm not so sure what that actually was all about because it made no sense to me. Because it's landlocked. Yeah, I didn't think it was, there's no so it was going to extend, but, but there was still no, was going to stop. But there's no frontage of the property, so I mean, I don't know how that's going to happen. If you know about zoning, I mean, you know, that's 
that's how it works. Could they extend that existing property if they if they owned more than what they're building on now? Could they just do an extension? Only if we allow it. But again, it makes the even the dead end road even longer. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's no way to come. I mean, back. I don't know how many. Have you been involved with 40 B, Steve? To the road we're going through. To a, to a certain degree. So they always have two egresses, right? Okay. Yeah. You know, that's usually the deal killer on 40 B, by the way. You can't get the, food, the uh, second egress. Mm -hmm. and, and the only other thing about a 40 B is they follow state regs as opposed to local bylaws. That's the beauty about a 40 B. I mean, without looking at their plans and, and designing it for them, I'm sure we could figure an area for some type of gravel secondary road and potentially a loop, but if they don't have the frontage, yeah, we would need to hold land. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so there's they, nothing over there that they essentially, own. this property uh, behind Burning Fills, would that be, or is, it's, or is heading, it past it's heading in that direction. Was it past the Agri Panel? It's, it's past, past Redmill Road. Yeah, oh, it's past okay. the cemetery, past that field. It's past the past Kingsley, right? uh, it's past Kingsley, Kingsley, I should say. No, no, the other way. Yeah. I just between New and We're talking about up in here, right? Somewhere? Yes, right where probably maybe that one no, opposite side. So, so yeah. this is Red Mill. Other this side must of Red be, Mill Road. This must be Red Mill Road, right? No, no, no. Red Mill. Oh, right Red Mill there. Road, right here, right. Yes. This okay, is okay, the okay, this okay, is property up here somewhere. Yeah. So it's past that open space. I think this is, is the driveway right here. here. This opening right here. See right here. Yeah. Yep. There it is. That's okay. the driveway oh, right yeah, there. And then it goes into this big property here, and of course it goes up against the Mansfield Town Line. So. Or east of Tower Line in that way. direction. So, right. And then Red Mill Road doesn't have a water main in it. Does not. Okay. And this is all private. I think it's before here, it came here. Well, some That's of this is conservation land. Because when you walk down that way, they say uh, no hunting or fishing or whatever else because it's all conservation. Well, there's a. Easton's got a well over there. There's nothing on red, this section of Red Mill Road, right? right? And there's, Easton does have a well over here somewhere. But that's where it is, right here. Just that's the yeah. I don't know how you can do that. There. That's that's no real. Right. But somehow they got away with it before, and that was approved by our former commissioners. Well, they were just. They no, I'm just saying, that, and, they, and it was a long. What they said was a long conversation, hmm. and that's what they settled for. So again, we probably need to take another look at it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree yeah, with that. Me too. I mean, there are going to be some instances that you just can't loop a piece of property based right. on design. Right. You know, if that's the case, you know, you do your best practice and make sure that there's hydrants installed after the last possible cap. You know, and don't leave that little piece that like, you can Do we have an interconnect email pump. there? We do not. We don't. We just interconnect and interconnected on Gilbert Street. We have the two hydrants that are there that they can do the municipal connection. Right. Hydrant right. To hydrant. Right. Right. As part of the improvements that we would want to see there, the original improvements showed replacing the water main from Newcomb to the Mansfield town line, yep. connecting everybody over. Um, based on the situation that we've run into and the AC pipe that is in place from Newcomb to 123 at White Street, yep. um, that varies in size from oversized 10 inch AC, which is a 12 inch OD pipe, um, down to 10 inch goes down to, I believe, a piece of six inch cast, back up to eight inch AC before it gets to Newcomb. And that's all off the road um, in front of Red Mill Village. It in front of my in, house? Yeah, in front of, in front of Mr. Bernstein's <laughs> house. Cuts in at well three, goes in under the water where the old bridge is. Yeah, that's where yeah, the, the old Newland Street yeah. that I learned just the other day <laughs> is still more or less so, intact. That's so scary. All of that needs to go. That, that needs to be part of this improvement or, you know, Majority of it. And then uh, number three wells over there too, right? Number three is over yeah. there as well. Yeah. That's right next to the right. 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 All stuff that so we But we told them we were on a new water main and they didn't think it was a big deal. Yeah. They can use plastic now. Right, it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other new world Thanks. business? What, what do you got, John? Uh, just finished up lead and copper sampling. Um, Labs taking their time with those, um, waiting on our last manganese sample to publish our quarterly secondary contaminant report that we have. 30, to 30, 30 samples? Oh. 16. Yeah, because 16. of the uh, 
temporary Wolf 5A going online. Steve, can we yeah. get PDFs of that? So, Email to us? That was a bear, getting those from... Um, so I already have, so I can get, I can redo it with all the signatures. You want the cool time though. But did you already send those to us? I sent Fair. Frank one, so Frank can forward them well, without the signatures. Well, He's one to see that. That was a separate excuse, yeah. it wasn't from a home office. So that's the last page of one. So, uh, so we get the 90th now. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I had no concerns about that. <clears throat> um, so really we're just waiting for the lab to get all that to us to really start pushing some paper. But okay, good. All the always oh, fingers crossed. So how many do they get their results? They will. They, they haven't quit yet. Yeah, no, I know that. I know that. Oh, they yeah. Just, yeah, okay. yeah. Within 30 days of getting the results, we have to send it to all of them. Okay. Anyway, Great. Is. Excellent. Good job. All right. Um, any other business? What's that? Next meeting. Next meeting. All right. Next meeting dates. What do we got here? I have twelfth. The twelfth is that right? I have, which is a Tuesday. That work for everybody? Looks right. Yeah. That's uh, July twelfth. Yeah. July twelfth. Twelfth and the twenty sixth. Oh boy. Can you show us that then? Got a problem? No, no problem at all. <laughs> yeah, the 26 will be the next one after that. All right. That sounds good. Then we'll pencil that in and give the conflicts. I'm sure we'll be able to talk to each other. And... All right. Without further ado. All right. I would like to move to adjourn this evening's meeting of the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.